Hey guys, Ben here at the Strength Factory and welcome to Factory Knowledge. This episode is called You Can't Fire a Cannon from a Canoe. And it's not actually about naval warfare, but this is about a principle of training, whether it's strength training or whether it's being out and about on your bike or running or sprinting or racing or competing. Uh, and it's all about the idea that you need to create tension to be able to apply force. So let's talk about that cannon and a canoe. A cannon, yeah? It creates a massive explosion to fire the projectile to kill the pirates, okay? Unless you're a pirate. And if we put that cannon in a canoe, do we think it's gonna fire as far as it would? Or is the canoe gonna move backwards and bob up and down? Is it gonna be accurate, the cannon fire? Or is it gonna be moving around unstable? When we compare that to putting the cannon on like the battlements of a castle or a fort to shoot at those same pirates and it's rock solid, it's on stone, it's locked down. There's going to be no recoil when it fires, it's not going to move, it's not going to twist or bob about. I know which cannon is going to fire further with more power and hit its target. And that's exactly the same when you think about your body and trying to produce force. So. A really good way to think about it is thinking about a punch, okay? So if I'm going to throw a punch, it's all very well throwing it nice and fast and hitting my target, but if the parts downstream from the fist don't have tension, i.e. my wrist is soft, my fist isn't hard, you know, my I don't have tension through my core, then when it uh, meets its target, I then lose that force, lose that tension, and the punch isn't as effective. Compare that to somebody who's mastered the uh, techniques of creating tension, and when that punch lands, everything down the chain is rock solid, literally from the back toe, okay, all the way up through the legs, through the hips, through the stomach, across the body, shoulder, all the way down there, when that, that punch meets its poor victim, you know, if we've got that tension, then it's really going to do some damage, okay? So, cannons, canoes, tension, what does this mean for most of you guys watching who are going to train in the gym? Well, I'm going to give you a few examples. The first one we're going to go through is doing some sort of jump, whether it's in the gym, whether it's in competition. Uh, to do a jump, to express power, and to move your body weight as quick as possible, you need whole body tension, otherwise, your cannons, or your legs and your hips, you're going to be shooting it off a canoe. I'll show you. So, uh, hopefully you can see the difference there. Two jumps. The first jump, I was braced. I was drilled in the floor. I had tension through my hips, tension through my stomach. I was set here in the upper body as well. Bang, bang, really explosive. And did a quick, powerful jump and probably leaked minimal power. The second jump, I didn't go through that as diligently. And as I loaded the jump, hopefully saw my knees dropping in. I didn't have the tension. So straight away I lost that tension. And as I then went to apply the force to jump up, I didn't go as high, okay? I wasn't switched on here as well, so if you'd seen from the side, I probably lost a bit of my posture as well. Put all of that together, and two things. Number one, you don't jump as high. Number two, you're at a greater risk of injury, especially if you're doing lots of jumps, okay? Whether it's in the gym or as part of your sport. Now, let's think again about some other examples. The press-up. Ask someone what a press-up is, and they'll say it's an upper body exercise which is true but ask me and I'll tell you it's a whole body exercise so let's say I want to do a press up okay I want to exert lots of force so I'm pushing into the floor now there's two ways we can do that there's the way you see a lot of people do it where their hips are dropped their shoulders are all slack and their elbows flop out like this Okay, looks ridiculous, 
and you're not going to get very strong like that and you're going to do your shoulders in or the second version where you've got whole body tension so like I said the press up is a whole body exercise I'm going to start I'm going to tuck my hips underneath I'm going to squeeze my bum and stomach really hard okay and I'm going to drill the hands through the floor and have loads of tension to create lots of force second option there lets me create lots of force so whether I want to do a pure a real strength movement with a lot of weight like a bench press or a weighted press up or whether I want to do a powerful movement and maybe do uh, an explosive press up off the floor either way that tension so we're firing the cannon from the castle walls now and you're the castle that is going to let you apply tension and express your power and your physicality in training and in sport Thinking about examples then actually away from the gym, think about sprinting a mountain bike or BMX or something like that. Now, obviously, it's all about that leg power, but what happens if you've got great big powerful legs, but you don't have that control and you've got a weak core? Well, you know what's gonna happen is your hips are gonna move around like it's Friday night and you're gonna leak power okay you're going to lose your posture and ultimately less that power is going to go through the pedal to the back wheel to propel you forwards it's exactly the same if you think about sprinting up a hill or something like that a sprinter you know watch Usain Bolt okay it's obviously on the flat but the same principles apply whole body tension you can see every muscle rippling in their body as they sprint okay nothing is switched off nothing is relaxed the more power you want to create, the more bodily and muscular tension you need. Now, how do you actually go about applying this? The first thing is to slow things down in the gym, in your training, which I'm always banging on about. Reduce the weights. Loads of people I see, I'm right outside the gym, they're in there right now, and they're lifting weights that are too heavy for them um, because they want to lift the big boy weights and, you know, whatever but they're lifting it with poor technique and uh, without correct tension. And so that's why I'm trying to educate people on these things. You need to slow down, you need to use less weight, you need to learn to create tension. So we can do things like maybe trying to snap the bar. Okay, if you've got a bubble, snap the bar and feel how it creates a tension across your chest, upper back and down your arms. We can, you know, if we're doing a goblet squat or something like that, so I've got a weight in front of my chest, I can drill those feet into the floor to create that tension up in my hips, okay? So you can feel your bum before you even start the rep. Ten, uh, techniques like that and learning to properly brace your core, which is something I coach all my athletes on, um, will pay absolute dividends in the long run. So it's that long-term approach, that consistent approach of doing the work now with the lighter weights, with the perfect technique, will allow you to perform at a high level in the long run. Okay, so swallow the ego, less weight, slow down, focus everything on technique, learn how to create tension, and then apply it in everything you do in the gym, and then everything you do in your sport, and you will perform better. Simple. So if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you want more training, knowledge about anything to do with action sports, then just let me know what you want to know about and I'll do my best to do a video for you. Um, and if you haven't already, then hit subscribe. Thanks very much.